Okay, good morning to our Madam Christina and my fellow friends. Today we are from the Emergency and Trauma Department Group going to present about patient with abdominal aortic aneurysm. This is outline for our presentation. First, we're going to discuss about the social demographic data. The patient name is known as a Mr. J and his age is 58 years old. His diagnosis is abdominal aortic aneurysm or more known as a triple A. The patient comes to the ETD using his own transport and accompanied by his son. Reason of admission Patient complained of abdominal pain with the verbalization of pain score 9 out of 10. The pain was prickly in nature and was radiating to the back. It was started since yesterday night. Patient's face looked pale and his breathing rate was 14 beat per minute. Moving on to the next part which is health history. Firstly, for past medical history, he was diagnosed with Dematis mellitus type 1 and currently is compliance to the medication to control his blood glucose level which is metformin. Secondly uh, is gout. He also complains with his medication which is colchicin to control his gout and also uh, complain with the doctor's advices not to eat certain food for example like uh, meat and seafood and then the last one is COPD or chronic obstructive pulmonary disease for the activity of daily living before admission uh, he is a active smoker for past 30 years which means he started smoking at the age of 30 years old average is about four to six cigarettes per day which is very much and he also consumed the alcohol but in a seldom way which is once per week and he also in a restricted diet which is a diabetic diet for a long time because he has a diabetic mellitus type 1 which is the body cannot produce his own insulin so no enough insulin lah. and for the physical examination we try to prioritize the airway the breathing pattern and the circulation so the first is we ascultate the patient and the air entry is equal for both lung. Uh, the heart no dual rhythm and no murmurs. There is no tracheal deviation seen and but the patient is in the kidney situation which is 40 breath rate per minute which is very tachypneic. And we can see that due to the tachycardia and tachypnea, the patient is actually in peripheral sinuses presented with the upper limbs and lower limbs in cold and clammy and pale condition. The abdomen also distended due to the aneurysm of the iota. We can feel the pulsating mass in the midline of abdominal region. Um, furthermore, upon auscultation, uh, using the stethoscope, we could hear the whooshing or broad sound uh, at the epigastric region or the midline region of the iota. This indicates that there is a turbulence of the blood flow in the aortic, in the aneurysm of the aortic. Um, the CBD is in situ, so we could monitor the urine output. So this patient have a poor, very poor urine output, oliguria, which is below 400 ml per day. Now we continue with laboratory investigation. This is the blood result for this patient. The potassium level is 3.2 millimole per liter, which is lower, lower than normal range. This condition happened as the patient has underlying heart disease. The albumin level is 30 millimole per liter, which is lower than normal range. Reduce in albumin, albumin happened due to shock, inflammation, and malnutrition. In this case, due to rupture of iota, the patient may result hypovolemic shock. Creatinine level is higher than normal range, which is 139.1 micromole per liter, and from the blood result, it also shows prolonged PTT, which is 330 seconds. Otherwise, the blood result already shows normal. The BBC result shows the patient have partially compensated respiratory exposure. Next is pathophysiology. 
Abdominal aortic aneurysm is an enlarged area in the lower part of the major vessel that is supplied blood to the body that is aorta. The usual causes of this disease is hardening of the artery that is atherosclerosis. Atherosclerosis occur when the fat and other substance build up in the lining of the blood vessel. Next, high blood pressure also can cause the abdominal aortic aneurysm because it can damage and weaken the aorta wall. By having a blood vessel disease also can cause this disease because it can lead because the blood vessel because this there is disease that can cause the blood vessel to become infected. Next, infection in the aorta. Ready, a bacteria and fungal infection may cause uh, an abdominal aortic aneurysm. And for the last one is trauma. For example, being in a car accident can cause an abdominal aortic aneurysm. Group that, get, group that has a risk factor of getting this disease is the patient that is active or heavy smoker and have an underlying hypertension and hypercholesterolemia and also having the atherosclerosis. Being a uh, male gender and also have an advanced age that is more than 65 years old and have a family history of having a dominant aortic aneurysm also can lead the patient of getting this disease. Next, we continue with management and treatment. The first management and treatment given by, to the patient is every, every 30 minutes per the sign. Blood pressure is taken every 30 minutes to monitor his blood pressure to avoid patient condition deteriorating as patient was on no, no adrenaline 2 mils per hour. Second, blood taking. Blood for ABC, DC, fuse, magnesium, PT, PT, INR was taken step upon arrival for further treatment. ECG. ECG step was taken upon arrival and shows an, atri an atrial fibrillation heart rhythm. Four, Blood transfusion. Doctor requested to transfuse two pints of pack cell to the patient, and the first pint was transfused before the patient transferred to the SGH. Fifth, medication. There are two medications that have been given to the patient, which are noadrenaline and IV fentanyl, 50 microgram. Noadrenaline was given with flow rate of 2 ml per minute to elevate his blood pressure, as blood pressure upon arrival was 76. 76 over 56 mm his chain. IB fentanyl, 50 microgram, was given to treat his severe pain, verbalized that pain score of 9 out of 10. Lastly, transfer to LGH. After stabilizing the patient by increasing his blood pressure and after transfusion of one point pet cell, the patient then transferred to SGH for further advanced treatment and management. Now, I'm going to talk about the nursing care plan that can be done on the patient. We prioritize three nursing diagnoses, which are hypovolemic shock, decreased cardiac output, and acute pain. The first nursing diagnosis is hypovolemic shock related to internal hemorrhage secondary to rupture abdominal aortic aneurysm, as evidenced by low blood pressure, 75 over 56 mercury, high heart rate, 115 beats per minute, tachypnea, 40 breath per minute, and low urine output, 15 mils per hour. The goal for this nursing diagnosis is, patient will maintain adequate cardiac output, such as normal blood pressure, 120 over 80 mercury, heart rate, 60 to 100 beats per minute, respiration rate, 18 to 20 breath per minute, and adequate urine output, 30 mils per hour after intervention. The evaluation for this nursing diagnosis after the intervention had been done is patient maintain adequate cardiac output such as normal blood pressure, 120 over 80 mercury, heart rate, 60 to 100 beats per minute, respiration rate, 18 to 20 breath per minute, and adequate urine output, 30 mils per hour after intervention. The intervention include assess vital sign, especially blood pressure, respiration rate, and heart rate, uh, so that to notice any indication of dehydration, such as low blood pressure, high respiration rate, and high heart rate. Next is to monitor serum electrolyte and urine osmolality and report any abnormality, as elevated blood urea nitrogen suggests fluid deficit that can cause low urine output. 
Then provide comfortable environment by covering the patient with light sheet to prevent further fluid loss. Other than that, insert IV catheter for IV access so that parental fluid refreshment can be done. Then administer parental fluid as prescribed by doctor to maintain hydration status. Lastly, administer blood as prescribed by doctor to correct fluid loss from active bleeding. The next nursing diagnosis is decreased cardiac output related to atrial fibrillation secondary to abdominal aortic aneurysm as evidenced by low blood pressure, 75 over 56 mercury, low oxygen saturation, 88% under room air, capillary refill is more than 2 seconds, and patients have cold, clammy, and pale skin. The goal for this nursing diagnosis is patient will demonstrate adequate cardiac output such as normal blood pressure, 120 over 80 mercury, adequate oxygen saturation, more than 95%, capillary refill is less than 2 seconds, and patients have warm and dry skin after intervention. The evaluation after intervention had been done on the patient is patient demonstrated adequate cardiac output, such as normal blood pressure, 120 over 80 mercury, adequate oxygen saturation, more than 95%, capillary refill is less than 2 seconds, and patients have warm and dry skin after intervention. The intervention that can be done on the patient is assess the skin color as cold, clammy, and pale skin are the indication for increased sympathetic nervous system. Next is to close monitoring fluid intake, especially IV line, as reduced cardiac output cannot tolerate increase in fluid. Then, less cardiac monitoring on the patient to monitor any dysrhythmias. Other than that, position the patient into supine position to increase venous return. Then, let the patient completely rest in bed to facilitate temporary compensation. Lastly, administer oxygen as prescribed by doctor as failing heart do not respond to increase of oxygen demand. The last nursing diagnosis is acute pain related to disease process secondary to abdominal aortic aneurysm as evidenced by tachypnea, 40 breaths per minute, high heart rate, 115 beats per minute, facial grimace, profuse sweating, and patient verbalized his pain score is 9 over 10 at abdominal region. The goal for this nursing diagnosis is patient will appear more comfortable and verbalize satisfactory pain score, which is less 3 to 4 than the current pain score with normal respiration rate, 18 to 20 breaths per minute, and normal heart rate, 60 to 100 beats per minute after intervention. The evaluation after the intervention had been done on the patient is Patient appear more comfortable and verbalize satisfactory pain score, which is less 3 to 4 than the current pain score, with normal respiration rate, 18 to 20 breaths per minute, and normal heart rate, 60 to 100 beats per minute, after intervention. The intervention that can be done on the patient is assess vital sign, especially pain, so that appropriate pain management strategy can be done. Next is to prepare comfortable environment for the patient so that the patient can rest well after the medication take effect. Then, procure information if patient have allergy to any painkiller medication so that suitable medication can be given to the patient. Other than that, monitor the patient condition after medication given so that the doctor, the doctor can be notified immediately if there's anything happen. Then, evaluate the effectiveness of the medication to make sure the patient is comfortable as the medication take effect. Lastly, administer medication as prescribed by doctors such as fentanyl to elevate the patient pain. In conclusion, Mr. J was admitted to ETD Serene Hospital due to the abdominal pain, pale face, and tachypnic. After the patient received the treatment at ETD, the patient was sent to Sarawak General Hospital for further advanced management and treatment. This is because the vital signs are not still stable, although the medication was given to the patient. So that's all from us. Thank you.